Hey posers, I'm Grumpy Cheeto and I'm here for this week's ECW review. And unfortunately, this is one of the last two weeks of ECW. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I don't know what the revolution has for me. All I know is that Tiffany doesn't care and she's drinking margaritas. I'm taking Tiff out tonight. Alright, let's get right into the show. This week's ECW is in my backyard of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Start off the show with a backstage segment with pretty much all the members of the ECW roster, all five of them, and Tiffany comes in saying she's glad to have been the ECW man general manager and doing her thingy thingy looking pretty every week and stuff like that. Then afterward, she says, I don't care anymore. She throws on some margarita or some uh, Mardi Gras beads. Pulls out a margarita and says, let's have fun. I raise my glass to Tiff having fun. Because I'll tell you what, when Tiff has fun, I have fun. Classic moment right before she walks off camera. Zack Ryder walks up and says, how can you be messing around like this? And she says, I'm just going to party and have fun. Zack Ryder says, you can't do that. This is just, this is not cool. That We need to, you know, do something, yada, yada. I don't even remember what he said. And she, and he said... And he said, what are you going to do, just party these next two weeks? Tiff says, woo, woo, woo. You know it. One of the sexiest things Tiffany has ever said. Uh, my hat's off to you, girl. I hope you stay on board with WWE and they have you doing something great. All right, so we move on to the first match of the night, which is Gold Dush and Yoshitatsu versus Kre uh, Kalen Croft and Trent Beretta. The winner of this match gets a unified tag team title shot next week on the very last episode of ECW. So what? They're just gonna they're just gonna have whichever team win let a big show and uh big show and Miz bury this tag team. Well, it was an okay match, nice tag team back and forth action. In the end, Goldust and Yoshitatsu win. My burrito goes out to them. So anyway, we go through some commercials and some promos for the new NXT thing, which I am, by the way, not excited about, and I really don't want to cover it. So, hope the Revolution and guys are watching, but NXT, not for me. All right, we move on to the second match of the night, which is a squash match. Why, when you have two weeks left, would you put a squash match? When you've got all this time, they could have had Zack Ryder in a match. Ugh. Anyway, so you got Ezekiel Jackson versus Perry Wallace. And that's right, I wrote it down. He weighs 190 pounds, and he gets the crap beat out of him by Ezekiel Jackson. This is, I mean, Big Zeke walks in to ECW tonight, and he's like, I want one Jabba sandwich with a fry, please. And then, lo and behold, here comes Perry Williams. I haven't mentioned him twice. And yeah, he just gets the crap beat out of him. He gets clotheslined, he gets urinagi, he gets pinned. Afterwards is an in-ring promo by Zeke and Regal. Pretty good. Challenging Christian next week on ECW for the last episode of ECW for an ex uh, for a ECW title match against Christian. Okay, I can I can live with that. Um, then, after some commercials and more promos, we go to a backstage segment with Christian accepting the challenge. And we have Christian making it an Extreme Rules match. I'm sorry, why did you have ECW grow some balls in the last two weeks? Why couldn't you have done that way earlier, and then ECW might still be going and, thri and thriving right now? I just don't get you, Vince. I just don't get you. Anyway, so we move on to our main event, which is Shelton Benjamin versus Van Archer in a no count out, no disqualification match. Crap. This was if this was just a normal match, it would have been okay. But the only no disqualification crap you had in here was Shelton Benjamin and Vance Archer were outside the ring. Vance Archer grabs a kendo stick, hits Shelton, tries to hit Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin blocks with a chair and then hits Van Vance Archer with the chair. That's it, as far as I saw. And honestly, I didn't. You know, I was watching this match, and as I said, it was a pretty good match. But as a no-DQ? Really? 
In the middle of the match, the medic had to come in because Shelton Benjamin had like a spot of blood on his head. I mean, like, it, it was incredibly stupid. My burrito does not go out to you. Anyway, so then, um, towards the end of the match, uh, there was a lot of back and forth. Uh, Vance Archer did some ground and pound work on Shelton. Eventually, Shelton came back with some counters. Shelton hit the pater for the one, two, three. Ding, ding, ding. Shelton Benjamin is your winner. It's probably going to be his last match on ECW. I think next week they should make it a triple threat match. Christian, Shelton, and Ezekiel Jackson. That'd be a great match. Have Shelton go over, win, you know, actually win the ECW title finally. Pretty good week this week. I can't say it was phenomenal. I can't say it was extraordinary, but it's just like nobody cares anymore. Sorry, I'm kind of burpy from my burrito. Um, but, you know, nobody really cares. And it's just like, eh, we're here for a couple, you know, two more weeks. Let's just kind of wing it. So... This part of my show now is going to become a video response, well not a really video response, but a response to DeJose101. He did top five matches in ECW history, or the WWE's ECW history. So I am now going to respond with my top five most memorable moments in the new ECW history. I didn't say top five best matches, I didn't say top five best feuds, because this is just matches that I remember without looking them up online and without doing crap like that these are matches that I remember over the history of the new ECW so my number five is going to be the Big Show versus Ric Flair at, a, at an Extreme Rules match on ECW way back at towards the inception of this new ECW Ric Flair came on the show and I'm like Flair and Big Show in an Extreme Rules match on ECW as I watch the match and take that as an innuendo. Not really. Don't take that as an innuendo. Anyway, so this match was really good. Big Show and Flair went crazy with weapons. I honestly thought Flair might have would take the ECW title off Big Show. Although I really didn't honestly think so. But watching the match, I'm like, holy crap, this match is awesome. I never thought Flair had it in him. It was like watching Sean and Ric Flair at WrestleMania 24. I just, I never saw it coming that it could be that good of a match come out of Flair at his age. Number four, the new breed versus the ECW originals in an Extreme Rules match on ECW after Wrestle. This is like the ECW after WrestleMania. They had the six or the eight man tag again, which I want to say and correct, correct me if I'm wrong. It's Elijah Burke, ooh, Elijah Burke, Matt Stryker, Marcus Corvon, and I want to say Test. I might be wrong. Versus ECW originals, which was Rob Van Dam, Sabu, Tommy Dreamer and Sandman and it was just it was a great match it was an extreme rules match they had the match the week prior on Wrestlemania but it was just a regular match this one was an extreme rules match and they went crazy a great match great ring work by the originals and the new breed and just it was just a great you know match um this one the uh, the new breed picked up the win um, unlike at WrestleMania when the originals picked up the win, but I like the new breed winning here just because it put the new breed over as the new well, breed of ECW. Number three, Shelton Benjamin versus Christian at TLC. All right, I watched this match and I know there was an interruption in the middle of it where the medic came in to clean off. I think it was either Christian or Shelton, but this match was really good. This match stole the show at TLC. If you watch our TLC review, you know, I was on there talking about this match, and this was a great match. Number two was uh, any of CM Punk John Morrison matches back, in, I think in 07 or 08. I'm pretty sure it was 07. CM Punk John Morrison, they had some great contests back in 2007. Um, Morrison won most of those matches, but CM Punk brought it every time, and Morrison also delivered. And number one. Rob Van Dam versus John Cena at One Night Stand 2006. D. Jose, I have to agree with you on this one. And this wasn't a phenomenal match. This was, this was like the crowd made this match. They were chanting, at, you know, F you Cena, F, you know. They wanted Cena. They, there was a sign that said, Cena wins, we riot. I mean, the crowd made this match. And when Rob Van Dam won that East, the WWE title, People knew that ECW was coming back, and 
even though they had high hopes for it, there wasn't all that, you know, it didn't really deliver after that, but there was high hopes, and that crowd was crazy in that ballroom. If you haven't watched that match, or at least the beginning and the end of that match, YouTube it, because it's just, it was awesome. It was an awesome vibe and awesome feeling. All right, well, I don't know if this is going to be in one or two parts, but, you know, well, whatever happens, happens. I'm Grumpachito, and I am.